So, you want to bite some food. You got teeth for that, but apparently you can't be bothered to use those. <sighs> Man, you never appreciate what you got till it's gone. Hey guys, I'm Bethesda by Kai. I'm Kai, and today we're back once again taking a look at how to bite food in Blender. Yeah, you heard me right the first time. Let's go ahead and get started real quick. Hit the delete key to delete default cube because we won't be needing him for today. We're going to actually go ahead and make like a little bagel or a donut or whatever. We're going to actually go ahead and grab uh, the shift and the A button and hit shift A to grab a torus. We're gonna, before we do anything, before we click anywhere, we're going to open up this little tab down here that says add torus. And we're going to go ahead and change the minor radius. So uh, up and down, you can see I want to make it a little bit thicker of a donut or a bagel or whatever you're using here. So we're going to go with something about like uh, maybe uh, 0.6, maybe something around there. It looks pretty decent. Um, we can also go ahead and change the minor segments to maybe 32 and then the major segments to maybe 64. So we'll double that up um, for the minor segments and whatnot. So there we go. We have that. Now we can go ahead and go to Object Shade Smooth and we are looking good like that that now now we have that done we can go ahead and maybe give it a color real quick so add go to the material tab down here hit this little button to drop down a material and then change the base color to a nice like bagel -y color we can go to material viewport shading up at the top here to take a look at the color itself so drop that color down maybe a little bit a little bit more uh a little bit more red in there maybe something like that i guess that looks pretty decent kind of like maybe a uh some kind of a uh, do donut or a bagel or something. Who knows? Maybe maybe it's just a, 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 a circular chocolate. Who knows? Okay, it could be anything. All right. Um, so let's go ahead. And the next part is the actual biting part or whatever you want to call it. That sounds really silly, but that is what it is, I guess. Um, so let's hit Shift A and we'll search for a cylinder. And we'll go ahead and hit S to scale this bad boy down a little bit to about the size that you want your teeth marks to be. And then hit S Z. To scale on the Z axis, and then we can hit G, X to move this on over. Now you can see we are intersecting with the bagel or donut, the donut. There you go. Um, we'll hit the seven key to go to the top facing view. Here you can see that we can now uh, take a look at the bite marks themselves. I'm going to move this around by hitting S to scale it a little bit like that, and then hitting G and X to move this where I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and hit uh, Shift D once that is in place, and then hit G Y to move this up. So we have a little bite mark up there. Now you can see this little shape that we're carving out here with this little round edge. Obviously, that's what we're trying to go for. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, also make sure that we have both of these set to object. Uh, oh, wait, sorry, not object. Yeah, object. <laughs> we have to do each one separately. So object, shade smooth, and then this one, object, shade smooth. We can do them together, but just do them separately anyway. Separately anyway. Um, hit 7 to go back into the top facing view. Then hit shift D. And one more time, hit G, Y to move this down, obviously. So we have those three classic bite mark, uh, that classic bite mark shape. Put that about right there, and I think we're good to go. I'm going to move these inwards a little bit more because I want the bite to be a little bit maybe more shallow or maybe more deep, not shallow. There we go. So there, <clears throat> there you go. Next thing that I want to do, is I think I want to go ahead and actually grab the bagel or the donut itself, the donut, and go to the uh, modifiers tab here. Hit add modifier. We'll hit Boolean. Um, and what we'll do here is we'll select uh, one of the cylinders. So hit select there, and you can see it actually cuts that piece out if you take a look at that closely. Um, you can see it cuts that little piece out there, which is very, very nice. You can change it to fast or to exact. Um, it's basically the same exact thing for this specific um, for this specific situation. So here's a little drop-down box and apply. And we'll do the same exact thing two more times. So hit Boolean, um, object, select the next cylinder, then hit this da drop-down, hit apply, and one more time, uh, add modifier, Boolean, select the object, which is cylinder 002, and then hit drop down apply now we can go ahead and grab all three of these by holding down shift left click left click and hit delete to get rid of those and you can see now we have a little bite mark in our donut which is very very cool but the issue is this kind of weird in there because it's kind of like you know messy or whatever whatnot what what have you we could have gone ahead and uh subdivided the um the cylinders you can go ahead and do that if you want to but for right now this is uh, perfectly fine to me because i think these look pretty decent and we'll go ahead and clean it up in a little bit um so we don't have to add more vertices or more faces or whatever else so it can be as low poly as is possible um go ahead and hit tab you can see all of the uh vertices and whatnot it creates a couple of weird edges here and there 
but uh, for the most part, it is going to be perfectly fine. Let's go ahead and grab the face tool by hitting, uh, you can go ahead, hit, hit tab, and go into edit mode, like I said. Hit the face select tool up here at the top left hand corner. Hit C to grab the brush, and then just click and drag over all top of these faces here, like that. Right click to cancel the little select brush. And I can see we have all these selected. I'm going to hit uh, I to inset this, like that. Just a little bit, so it's not not a much, not a lot, but just a little tiny bit. So there's a little tiny bit of an edge there, something like that. And then we can go ahead and hit E to extrude, and then just pull it back a little bit. So, um, actually, wait, do you? No, I messed that up. I to inset, E to extrude, and we'll just kind of pull it in a little bit like that. There we go. Nice. Now, before we unselect anything, I'm gonna go ahead and go to the the material tab here, and hit this little plus icon, and then hit new. And then we'll change this to like a lighter color. So we will actually turn off my overlay so I can see the color a little bit better. Hit this little assign button. And then we can change the base color to maybe like a yellowish tan color. That would look like an inside the inside of a bagel or a donut or whatever, what have you. So there we go. That is the, uh, the bite marks there. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and fix up these little harsh rough edges by going and go to this little tab right here, which is the object data tab. Then we go to normals and check auto smooth. And as you can see, as soon as you do that, boom, much more clean, much more nice. Um, last thing I want to do is go back to the uh, back to the materials here. Turn the specular for the inside piece all the way down and the roughness. You can leave it all the way down as well. And then for the actual bagel itself, we'll go ahead and turn up the specular a little bit. Bagel, donut, whatever it is. And then we'll turn the roughness up. I kind of want this to be like a glazed donut, if I'm honest with you. So we're going to do something like that. Um, and of course, it's just a super simple material. This is just for the bite marks. Can't get too crazy with it. But you can add like uh, some a noise uh, texture to this. I have other tutorials for that. I might do that really quickly, actually, just because I don't like leaving things out. So let's go ahead and drag our window into two by putting our cursor up in the top left with that little triangle, or little plus little cursor thing. We'll go to the uh, we'll go to this little button right here and change this to the shader editor, and then we can go ahead and get rid of that panel. And really quickly, we can just hit Shift A and search for a noise texture. This is so easy to do, just so quick. Grab that, put the color into the specular. We can put it into the roughness as well, depending on which one looks better. Um, actually, yeah, we'll do the roughness instead. Put it into the roughness, and as you can see, uh, when we change the scale, maybe a little bit of the roughness. A little bit of the detail there. You can see that we have a nice, like, kind of rough looking glaze on there a little bit, kind of. So it looks kind of cool. I also want to make this a little darker, and we'll also turn specular tint all the way up so it gives that nice little, like, tan color in there instead of it being white because it looks kind of strange. But we can go ahead and actually change this to make it a little bit darker, tiny bit, and a little bit more saturated. Maybe something like that. There you go. That looks really good. Hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed today's tutorial. Of course, you can do the same exact thing with this little piece on the inside. Although I really like the kind of solid color that has. It looks pretty cool if I'm honest with you. So, hope you ladies and gentlemen enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. That is how to make some uh, biteable food in Blender. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you in the next one. But until then, bye-bye.